Welcome to this video on running Hacktoberfest online meetups for your community. I'm Samantha, Senior Developer Marketing Manager at DigitalOcean. I co-created the Hacktoberfest event kit in 2016 and have helped publish over 1,000 of your Hacktoberfest events in 87 countries over the last four years. In addition to Hacktoberfest events, I developed the DigitalOcean Global Meetups program and have helped promote over 1,000 in-person events and virtual hackathons throughout my career. Today, let's talk about how to organize a Hacktoberfest-themed online meetup. Special thanks to Amy Dickens and Nathaniel Akenwa for creating the first version of this video last year. A lot of the materials in this video were created by them, and we're recording this new video so that we can incorporate what we've learned last year and share the latest tips for how to host your meetups online this year. Here's what this video will cover. Why run a Hacktoberfest online meetup? Who is it for? How do you run one? What should an online meetup include? To help encourage a safe, inclusive, and fun Hacktoberfest experience for everyone this year, we recommend for all event organizers to host your Hacktoberfest meetups online. So what's an online meetup? You may also hear it being called a virtual meetup. We'll be using both terms interchangeably throughout this video. Essentially, an online meetup is an interactive gathering of people that happens on the internet. We stress the interactive part. It's not a lecture. You're creating a space for your community to come together, connect, and interact online. Let's start with why you might want to run a virtual Hacktoberfest meetup. Part of the reason Hacktoberfest works so well is because it's a remote participation event. People can contribute to the program from wherever they are in the world, and they can work asynchronously in whatever time zone. But that doesn't mean that everybody is working on their computers by themselves. Sometimes people come together to work on their open source contributions. They can meet at a work hangout, a university society, a club meetup, or just call up a few friends and work together. Working together this way can be really rewarding and help everybody get motivated to make their pull requests. So what are some reasons to run a Hacktoberfest themed online meetup? Firstly, you can help anyone who's completely new to Hacktoberfest and the world of open source software. Your online meetup can provide a space with mentors and content designed specifically for beginners. Secondly, a virtual meetup can provide a space for people who typically work on open source projects alone so they can come together and meet one another and build a community. Hacktoberfest is a great platform for this because you're providing a space to connect like-minded individuals who already were working on this in their own time. And finally, you can give open source contributors dedicated time and space to work on their contributions together. It's easy to sign up for something like Hacktoberfest and struggle to find the time to make your contributions. Inviting people to come together and work on pull requests helps provide that structure and can be a good motivator too. What do you need at a minimum? People to come to your event, an online platform to host it, and some content. Why should people come to your event? So let's start with people. Who might this event be for? Hacktoberfest can be for many people. You might choose to target one of these groups for your event or put on a general event that has something for everyone. So for beginners, contributors, and maintainers. What are the ways to get people involved? Well, this can be via invitation or open call, depending on how big your meetup is. So the invitation stuff, this works really well for smaller events and events that want to focus on providing a space for a specific type of person. Invitations can be sent via email or Slack. Um, with open call, this can work for a series of events or, a, or one large event where you want as many people as you can get. So for example, Twitter or great places where developers go like dev, dev.to, would be great ways to get the word out there. And don't forget to add your online meetup to the Hacktoberfest website. This year, we invite all event organizers to follow the instructions on the Hacktoberfest website to submit your online meetup. We have partnered with Major League Hacking, also known as MLH, to submit your online meetup so that you can share your meetup with even more people both inside and outside your local community. In order for your Hacktoberfest-themed online meetup to be listed on the Hacktoberfest website, your meetup has to be submitted through the MLH platform. If you're going to open tickets or sign up for your online meetup, remember that there is a rule of thumb around tech events and attrition. Not everyone who signs up for an online meetup will show up. Typically, an average of about a third of registrants will attend a virtual event. 
Find out if there's a limit to the number of people you can host on your virtual event platform. Then plan to limit the number of signups accordingly. So while we're talking about people, let's talk about how to design your events for inclusivity. This means designing so that all types of people can feel comfortable at your event. Make it as simple and as easy as it can be for everybody in your community to join. So things that you can do here are have a clear code of conduct and a clear reporting process. Um, and this one is really important. Ensure that you have communicated how to join your online meetup so that your attendees know what to expect. Do they need a special link or a password to join? Do they need to download software ahead of time? Are there internet bandwidth requirements or other technical requirements? Plan for some optional icebreakers so that people can get to know each other. Uh, this is especially important for attendees that have not attended one of your past events and they may not know everyone in the virtual room or anyone at all. Um, another really important point here is virtual name tags with pronouns uh, to help people share their experiences. Since everybody will be joining virtually, they can add their preferred pronoun to the first name field or in their profile of the virtual event platform of their choice. Where can a Hacktoberfest online meetup take place? Take a look at the online meetup kit on hacktoberfest.digitalocean.com for open source virtual event platform recommendations. You can also use Zoom, Google Hangouts, or whatever platform you're most comfortable with. Here are some considerations for choosing the best virtual event platform for your online meetup. Capacity. Are there limits to how many hosts and participants can present or interact at the same time? How long will your meetup be? Is there a time limit on the platform? What types of demos will your presenters be doing? Will they need to share their screen, share slides, live code, or share videos? Does the platform support the way your presenters like to share their work? Next is technical requirements. Will the platform work for people joining from a Mac, Windows, or Linux machine? How about mobile? Will they be able to join from their phones? How good is everyone's internet connection? Does the platform work for people with low bandwidth connections? Think about your attendees who can't get fast internet. And what's your online meetup budget? Asking all of these questions will help you select the right platform for your online meetup. One question I often get from virtual event organizers is, how do I make sure that people attend? And how can I create an environment where everyone has a good time? The key is to manage expectations. The more you set the stage for what your attendees can expect before your online meetup, the more likely your attendees will find your meetup helpful. These points presented here may seem very simple, but you'll be surprised by how many meetup organizers forget to write this out in the online invitation. Put yourself into the shoes of someone who has never heard of Hacktoberfest before, or they've never been to an online meetup before. What information can you provide on your online meetup registration page so that they have everything that they need to know to plan their day in advance and successfully join your online meetup? Last but not least, what do you need for a successful Hacktoberfest online meetup? There's a large amount of resources already available via the Hacktoberfest event kit. You can find assets for your online meetup website, a list of step-by-step -step instructions to help design your online meetups from scratch, and things like resources for workshops and frequently asked questions. Well, as for what more you can include, that's totally up to you, and it really depends on your event and audience type. Here are some types of content you might consider adding to your event. Invited guest speakers. Usually these are great if you plan to have a short opening talk and potentially want to have a well-known speaker to help draw attendees to the event. This could be a Hacktoberfest related talk or something just for fun. You can decide this based on who your audience is. Workshops. Having workshops is particularly important for beginners. Things like an intro to Git and GitHub or a good first time pull request. These are great resources for first time attendees. You can also include workshops on other open source topics like documentation, triaging issues, creating pull request templates for your repo, and more. And panels. These might not be suitable for all events, but sometimes it can be good to have a Q&A session with an experienced open source maintainer about their experience working with open source software. It's important to consider content in a way that aligns with your event goals so that you can set the expectations for your attendees. Let's talk a little bit about scheduling content. A good rule of thumb for a Hacktoberfest event is to treat the format more like a hackathon or a hack day. The main goal of the event should be to work on pull requests together and collaboratively 
so that any content you include for the event shouldn't distract from this altogether. Consider making all additional content optional or limiting it to under 15 minutes so that it will be a non-optional part of the event. Also prepare content in a way that attendees can check in on at a later stage if they want to. So provide slide decks online, email attendees links after the event, and think about potentially recording the talks so that you can share them later on. Also know that you can have content that's just for fun. Longer events such as Hacktoberfest Hack Days can include more short breaks where you create spaces for your attendees to come together to play games or socialize. Taking meaningful breaks in between work sessions can create pockets of fun throughout your event. Thanks for joining me today. We really appreciate your time and know that you're going to produce some wonderful online meetups around the world in celebration of open source. Happy Hacktoberfest and happy hosting.